Well, as we mentioned before the break, the president today retweeted a misleadingly edited video of Nancy Pelosi, edited to highlight and exaggerate stuttering. Another faked video is also circling, uh, circulating online. It's been slowed down to make Pelosi appear incoherent, ill, perhaps drunk. The video is fake. It's manipulated. Numerous audio and video experts and fact-checking organizations have confirmed that. But that video in particular has been viewed by millions of people on Facebook. And in fact, it's still up on Facebook, even though Facebook knows it's fake. They've added comments from independent fact checkers to inform people who watch it and have made it less prominent, but it is still up there. Now, YouTube took it down, but it's still up on Twitter. They're not even commenting about it. Facebook, however, was uh, good enough to provide us with a spokesperson. She's Monica Bickert, the company's vice president for global policy management. I spoke to her just a short time ago. So, Monica, in the wake of the 2016 election, obviously, Facebook has repeatedly told Congress, the American people, that you're serious about fighting disinformation and fake news. Yet this doctored video that I think your own fact checkers acknowledge is doctored of a Speaker Pelosi remains on your platform. Why? Well, you know, first off, I think the suggestion there is that we haven't taken action, and that's not right. We have acted. Anybody who is seeing this video in newsfeed, anyone who is going to share it to somebody else, anybody who has shared it in the past, they are being alerted that this video is false. And this is part of the way that we deal with misinformation. We work with internationally certified fact-checking organizations that are independent from Facebook, and we think these are the right organizations to be making decisions about whether something is true or false. And as soon as we get, and we did in this case, as soon as we get a rating from them that content is false, then we dramatically reduce the distribution of that content, and we let people know it that it's false so they can make an informed choice. Well, why keep we it do. up, though? Yeah. We think it's important for people to make their own informed choice about what to believe. Our job is to make sure that we are getting them accurate information. And that's why we work with more than 50 fact-checking organizations around the world. If there were misinformation that was, let's say, tied to an ongoing riot or the threat of some physical violence somewhere in the world, we would work with safety organizations on the ground to confirm falsity and the link to violence. And then we actually would remove that misinformation. So but misinformation so about that, here, that doesn't promote violence but misinformation that, you know, portrays the third most powerful, you know, politician uh, in, in the country as a drunk or somehow impaired, that's fine. No, what's important to us is making sure that people have the accurate information to make their own choice. But it's not accurate And I think if you look right now at the, we are telling people that this is false, right, and but, we but are you're not, putting that but, information out there But video is powerful than your network. right. But the video is powerful, more powerful than whatever you're putting under the video. Well, actually, what we're seeing is that the conversation on Facebook on Twitter, uh, offline as well, is about this video having been manipulated. I mean, as evidenced by, you know, my appearance today, this right. is the conversation. The conversation is not about people believing this video. It's that they are discussing the fact that it was manipulated. And that's the conversation that people should be having. You have no problem removing 3.39 uh, billion fake Facebook accounts from October through March. So why is it okay for you to remove fake Facebook accounts but it's not okay to remove a clearly fake video. Because we're focused, when we look at our community standards, those are about keeping the community safe. Well, fake well, how, accounts, how are fake yes, Facebook fake accounts, accounts do engage. Fake accounts, we do see that fake accounts engage in safety violations more than accounts that are real. 3.39 billion of them fake are, accounts, are promoting violence? I mean, you, it's a fundamental, right. no, that's not what I said. It's a fundamental rule when you come to Facebook, you have to use your real identity. That's always been our rule. And we do see that accounts that are fake are engaged in uh, safety violations more than authentic accounts. Right. And by the way, and this, this is probably not shocking, fake accounts are also more likely to distribute misinformation or fake news. And so part of our effort to combat misinformation, it's not just about uh, working with third party fact checkers. When we remove fake accounts, we are also reducing the chance that uh, these accounts would be sharing misinformation. And I would point out that this is working. If you have the scale, though, to be able to remove over the course of six months 3.39 billion fake accounts, and you have the scale to remove, I think ID, you ID'd 80 in that six month period, 83% of accounts that or comments that were selling drugs or doing something uh, I illegal or promoting something illegal. You certainly have the scale to decide something that, that you know is clearly fake. It's not even 
a question. I, I guess I still just don't logically understand. I understand you, it's a it's a big business to get into of trying to figure out what's true or not, but you're making money by being in the news business. If you can't do it well, shouldn't you just get out of the news business? Look, I, I reject the notion that we're not doing a lot to counter misinformation. No, I didn't we say are. you're not doing a lot. So, I'm just saying if you are you are in this particular case uh, spreading and allowing the spread of a clearly false doctored video, again, you're in the news business. There's a responsibility that comes with that. Uh, and this is this isn't even a question. We aren't in the news business. We are in the social media business. Well, you people are in the news business. Facebook to the, share. Re the reason you're sharing news is because you make money from it. It keeps people watching you and more involved in your site, which I get, and that's fair. But if you're in the news business, which you are, you got to do it right. And this is false information you are spreading. We have a site where people can come and share what they think, what's important to them, the news that they find relevant. And when they do that, we want to make sure that they have access to accurate information. If there is a threat of safety, if we're talking about terror propaganda, that's something where we can actually assess that on its face and say, yes, this is terror propaganda, and we can pull it down. When you're talking so about political discourse, and, political and again, if it's misinformation that propaganda. is related to safety, uh -huh. okay. if it's misinformation that's related to safety, we can and we do remove it. And we work with safety groups to do that. But when we're talking about political discourse and, the, and misinformation around that, we think the right approach is to let people make an informed choice. So if somebody makes a video of President Trump and slows it down and makes it seem like he's drunk, which he's never had a drink in his life, uh, that's OK with you. If that, if that video is on and it makes people believe that the commander in chief is impaired with alcohol, that's OK on Facebook? No, again, I, I want to be really clear here, because the, the suggestion here is that we're not acting. No, no, would you we take that acting. down? Would you take down that video of the president of the United States that's been slowed down and manipulated by Russia, say, to make it look like he's drunk and impaired? We would remove content that's created by fake accounts. We would remove misinformation that's created by fake accounts. We would also remove misinformation if it is related to a threat of safety on the grounds. When it comes to yeah. so if a Russian other types individual, of misinformation, we work with the fact-checking networks, right. and then we put that information proactively in front of people so they can make their own decisions. So if it's a real person, not a fake account, which I know you're concerned about fake accounts because that gets the legitimacy of Facebook, but if it's actually just a real account, but it's somebody just doing that, they're not doing it even to make money, they're just putting it out there, uh, that, that video would stay up on Facebook. Look, we're, we have rolled out over the past few years all sorts of products and tools okay. to allow people to have more transparency can into the information yes or, they're you, seeing. You can't say yes or no. And that, well, because it, it really, the answer is, if there is something that is being shared by somebody who is an inauthentic actor, we would remove it. If it is tied right. to violence on the ground, but, we would remove it. And okay. there's a whole lot of other things that, hold on, there's a whole lot of other things that we're doing to make sure that we are not remotely in the same place where we were in 2016. I appreciate you being on. I heard, we, uh, no, we, we, we care yeah. a lot about getting this right, and we're happy, to, we're happy to share what we're doing. Monica Biggert, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, a quick note, the interview was edited for time, went about 12 minutes. Uh, we're posting the entire conversation online at ac360.com. Uh, Coming up now, and we appreciate them coming on because Twitter doesn't even comment about them keeping up the video.